People who've been arguing the media is bad for society since the term even existed. As Stephen Harrington discussed in his week three lecture, as early as the 15th century, uh, this argument has been around, and probably earlier. Then it was the Catholic Church arguing against Johann Gutenberger distributing copies of his Bible to the masses via the newly invented printing press. Now the argument takes many different forms, but perhaps the most prevalent in today's society is the argument that video games cause violence. This argument seems to pop up regularly both in Australia and around the world. It seems every time in the last two decades someone has committed a mass murder, the media reports that they were playing violent video games leading up to the event and blames these video games for the person's actions. And on the surface, this may seem like a reasonable argument. I mean, if a person is killing people in a virtual world, they may be more inclined to want to kill people in uh, the real world, especially with how realistic video games are today. But if we dig only a little deeper, we can see why this argument that violent video games are bad for society is a false one, and we can discover why. Right off the bat, there is no credible research that violent video games have any harmful effect on people whatsoever. As Christopher Ferguson stated on the website for the ABC television program The Drum, more and more scholars are debunking studies that have formed this conclusion. Moreover, the best studies being released recently have given no support to the claim that violent video games contribute to youth violence in any way. So what about the people who were playing violent video games and then did go out and commit violent and sometimes even deadly crimes? Well, as Ferguson states, the main predictor of negative outcomes is not what media the person was consuming, but rather any pre-existing mental health conditions they may have had. Millions of people play first-person shooter video games every day, yet we don't see every one of them going out and shooting people in real life. Just because these people played the games does not mean it was a cause of their violent acts. As Stephen Harrington discussed in his week two lecture, it's the difference between correlation and causation. Actually looking into the facts behind video games reveals a lot of the claims that the media makes regarding them are in fact false. The media often claims that video game playing demographic is dominated by young males, usually in their teens. They also claim the most popular types of games are violent video games, and that people can easily become addicted to these games, playing them for long periods of time without breaks. Looking at the research done by Bond University in 2012, however, we can see that all of these claims are false. The report, entitled Digital Australia, showed that the average age for a gamer in Australia is 32, with 75% of gamers being over the age of 18. The report also showed that 47% 47 of people who play video games in Australia are women, that the most popular type of games in Australia are puzzle games, and that only 3% of individuals actually play video games for more than five hours without a break. By considering these facts regarding video games and the people that play them, we can see that most, most all the statements the media constantly, consistently makes regarding them are woefully inaccurate. This is not the first time these claims have been made about a form of media. As Harrington discussed in his week three lecture, similar claims were made in the United States about comic books in the 1950s, and in 1978, Jay Manda wrote about how television dims the mind. This largely seems to stem from the clash between high culture and low culture that again Harrington referred to in his week three lecture. In every instance, there are a small group of individuals, usually with a lot of influence, that argue what type of text should be uh, fit for consumption by the masses. They argue that these particular texts are right and that they are aiming to educate the masses by promoting them. However, this is almost always at odds with what text the, me the general community are actually consuming and what they want to consume. These few individuals fear that this particular media type will have a negative impact on society, be it violence, sexualization, or simply making people less intelligent. These fears, however, have always been unfounded. The point that media is bad for society has been made for a long time. However, these arguments have rarely, if ever, held credence. The argument that video games promote violence is no different. There is no credible research showing that video games promote violence in individuals. And in fact, studies such as the one done by the University of Rochester in 2006 show, have shown that video games actually have a beneficial impact on both children and adults. The media is not bad for society, despite what the media tried to tell you.